Unit 4, Day 4, Entropy Worksheet. Let's look at a process we're all familiar with. Ice melting in a glass of water. Imagine you start with a glass that has some liquid water along with 36 grams of solid ice. The initial temperature of this mixture is 0 degrees Celsius. If you leave this glass in a room that has constant temperature of 25 degrees Celsius, the ice will spontaneously melt and you will end up with all liquid water. The second law of thermodynamics states that for a spontaneous process, the entropy of the universe must increase. Okay, for a spontaneous process, the entropy of the universe increases. Ice will spontaneously melt. Let's check and see if the entropy of the universe increases with this process. Here we're going to calculate the entropy change for the process of the ice melting. Eventually we're going to calculate the total change of entropy for the universe. Now, after the ice melts, the temperature of the resulting water will rise until it's the same temperature as the room. We will not look at that process today. We're just looking at the first step where the solid ice melts. First, you need to identify what the system and surroundings are. What are they composed of? What's their temperature? Etc. Often, it's very helpful to make a sketch or a diagram. So first, we want to identify the system. In this case, our system is water with ice. We have 36 grams of ice and the temperature is 0 degrees Celsius. The system change is that the ice is melting. So now the 36 grams of ice right here is going to turn into 36 more grams of liquid water. The temperature is still 0 degrees Celsius. So we're essentially looking at our process is the melting of the ice. Okay? So our system is this melting of the ice. The surroundings, okay, this is our system, the melting of the ice. And the surroundings, the surroundings is the room the rest of the room, and it is at a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. Okay, So that is our system, the ice melting, and our surroundings is everything else. All right, and so the initial and final states of the system are uh, the initial state of the system, uh, let's see, the system Initial is 36 grams of ice solid at 0 degrees Celsius, and the system final is 36 grams of liquid water, liquid, still at 0 degrees Celsius. The surroundings the surroundings, they start at a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius, initial, and then the surroundings are still the surroundings, not much change there, it's still 25 degrees Celsius after the change. Surroundings, final 25 degrees Celsius. Okay, so we've identified our system and our surroundings with a diagram now we're going to look at the energy change for this process. Does the energy flow into or out of the system? If so, does it flow as heat or work? So we're going to look at the energy change for the process. For the system, if we're going from ice solid to water liquid, in that case, that particular change is an endothermic change. So we know that heat flows into the system 
and this is a constant pressure situation and the volume isn't changing there's no gas being made or used so there's no work into or out of the system so we have heat flowing into the system that's the change now given that the delta or the a change in enthalpy of fusion for ice is 6.02 kilojoules per mole what's the change in enthalpy for the system for this process in units of joules okay so we have the um, standard information that the heat of fusion that is the change in enthalpy um, when ice melts this means that um, for every mole of ice that melts it takes 6.02 kilojoules of heat energy that's what that's telling us so we want to know the change in enthalpy for this particular system so for this particular system we would know the change in enthalpy for this particular system is going to equal the change in enthalpy of fusion um, which is in units of per mole times the amount um, for this particular system. So the change in enthalpy for this system is going to be 6.02 kilojoules per mole and in this particular case I have 36 grams of ice. That's my amount. This is moles of ice, per moles of ice. Um, now this is mole and this is gram so I need to convert my grams to moles. That's very easy to do knowing the molar mass of water it is uh, 16 for oxygen plus 2 for the hydrogen so it's 18 grams of water which is what ice is made of per one mole of water in this case it's solid water so that's the same thing as ice so the um, gram unit is going to cancel the mole unit cancels and I'm left with a quantity of energy the change in enthalpy for this particular system equals let's see um, 12.04 kilojoules per mole but I was asked to report this value in joules so I'm going to convert that to joules and that's going to be um, there are a thousand joules in one kilojoule so I'm going to put the answer back over here so I have space for it is going to be about 12,040 joules of um, heat energy absorbed by the system absorbed in this case uh, when we melt the ice.